On Sunday, January 14th, a cozy Mark IV experimental aircraft was lost while ditching in the ocean just to the west of Half Moon Bay Airport. There were four people on board the aircraft, no survivors. Here's what we know so far. Here on the Aviation Safety Network, Sunday, January 14th, a cozy Mark IV owner-operator winged wallabies registration November 656 Tango Echo built in 2007 four occupants four fatalities they departed hayward executive airport they landed at half moon bay they had dinner at half moon bay and the accident occurred while taking off to the north uh out of half moon bay airport a little after 7 p.m at night well after dark an experimental cozy mark IV amateur built by thane Oth ostroth Remember, this is an experimental aircraft, so whoever the original builder of the aircraft is, that's the name on the data plate. Now, Thane built the aircraft, but he was not involved with the accident. Impacted the waters off of Half Moon Bay, California, shortly after takeoff from Half Moon Bay Airport. All four occupants perished, and the aircraft was destroyed. The wreckage was found upside down in the water near Ross Cove. The Cozy Mark IV experimental aircraft is a Rutan-inspired canard pusher design foam and fiberglass home built aircraft the designer of the cozy is nat puffer it's powered by a o360 or an io360 a lycoming engine four cylinder 180 horse engine and this particular aircraft had a mt propeller on the back of it i'm not sure if that was a constant speed prop normally you put a fixed uh, pitch propeller on the back of these uh, experimental aircraft some unique design characteristics of this aircraft and that are typical of these Rutan pusher designs are one, it's canard design. So the main wing is back here, the canard located up front with the safety characteristics of stalling the canard first before you ever stall the main wing. So in theory, these aircraft are virtually stall proof and spin proof. But also the aircraft have a fixed main landing gear as seen here and a retractable nose gear. So while the aircraft is flying, the main gear, of course, is hanging out and the nose gear is retracted. Same thing when the aircraft is parked on the ground, you retract the nose gear so the aircraft doesn't settle back on its tail. The center of gravity is achieved once the pilots are in the airplane. Another common design feature of all of these is the canopy that needs to swing open on a hinge. The rudders on a canard aircraft are located out here on the wing tips. And located down here is the speed brake as these are very slippery, clean designs and they need to have these speed brakes to help them slow down. And the unique thing about the Cozy is that it was the first, as far as I know, four seat version of a Rutan design style of the either very easy or long easy. So basically, Nat Puffer took what appears to be a long easy design and stretched it or widened it to accommodate four seats. And apparently there were four, the airplane was full with four people at the time of this accident. A mistake was made on the news reports in the media about this aircraft being an electric airplane. No, it was a Lycoming 0360 engine, just a standard recip engine. But the pilot was working in the electric airplane industry. The owner and pilot of the aircraft at the time of the accident was Lockie Ferrer, a very sharp young man from Australia who recently graduated from MIT and was working in the electric airplane industry out of Hayward, California. And it's presumed that that's where the flight was going to return to, Hayward, California, not very far away from Half Moon Bay. Lockie was working at this very interesting startup company in Hayward called Magpie Aviation, working on electric aircraft and working on developing a tow system to tow electric aircraft with another electric aircraft in an effort to try and save batteries. Very interesting concept. Here's the data from FlightAware of the flight from Hayward to Half Moon Bay uh, before dinner, and there is no data of the accident flight as the aircraft had just departed Hayward to the north, and it appears, according to eyewitness reports, that they were having engine troubles, and it looks or it sounds like the aircraft made a left downwind in an effort to return to Half Moon Bay and then crashed into the ocean just 
to the west of the runway with the wreckage washing up right here in this little cove next to the runway. There is a video here on Twitter showing the wreckage washed up in Ross Cove. Here's the main part of the fuselage with the top rift off and note the main landing gear built very, very strong in these aircraft, of course, still attached to the aircraft. And this is, I believe, the right wing and part of the spar assembly here. So the aircraft was found upside down in the water and nobody was found in the aircraft. Here's another picture of the aircraft inverted, again with the main landing gear still attached to the uh, fuselage. And that's the problem with trying to ditch these canard type aircraft. The front nose gear is retractable and is just a noodle as far as strength is concerned. Um, and if the nose gear, more than likely the nose gear is probably still retracted when they ditched, even if it was extended, it would have folded right away. But these main landing gear, once the canard type aircraft contacts the water, that main landing gear just digs in and tends to flip the aircraft right over in the water. Plus you've got the compounded, compounded problem of having that clamshell canopy closed on top of you. But again, I don't know if the top of this aircraft ripped off uh, during the ditching or was ripped off while floating back to shore here and rubbing up against these rocks. Why the engine failed at all will be for investigators to figure out. Uh, I believe they can recover the engine out of this wreckage. But they're going to also, investigators are also going to need to know and understand the fuel system on the Cozy. And here's a owner's manual for uh, November 8-3 Mike Zulu. Now, being an experimental aircraft, you can design your fuel system any way you want. But here's the way it's done in A3 Mike Zulu, which is, I believe, a fairly stock setup for this design. But the fuel system consists of two separate 28-gallon tanks, individually selectable wing tanks. You cannot run off of both fuel tanks at the same time. You have to run off of one tank at a time, which means you do need to select back and forth, left and right tank, as needed for balance of the aircraft and there's a three-way selector valve left right and off which is located in the center of the front seat back so in most stock configurations that means you reach over your right shoulder to switch the tanks each fuel tank is individually vented with two vents one in the plans position near the fuel cap for level operation and one in the rear of the tank for nose down venting all vent lines traverse the top of the firewall and exit under the strake. A mechanical engine driven fuel pump transfers fuel from the tanks to the mechanical fuel injection system. So it is an IO360 engine, at least in this design. And because it's not a high wing, you have to have positive fuel pressure on the design at all times. And that's provided by the engine driven mechanical fuel pump. An auxiliary electric fuel pump provides backup for the engine driven pump should it ever fail. The, and the fuel pressures on the Dynon EFIS display in the cockpit. The electric pump should be turned on if the mechanical pump fails as indicated by lock, loss of fuel pressure. The electric fuel pump should also be used to provide fuel pressure redundancy during low altitude operations such as takeoff and landing. Very conventional. Another one of the odd quirks of these Rutan style designs, or at least here in the Cozy design, is once when the aircraft is parked, the nose gear is retracted and it's sitting on its nose or in the uh, grazing position, they'll call that. And you can't always fill up the full, you can't completely utilize the full 56 gallons on board the uh, aircraft in that position. You have to pick the airplane up, extend the nose gear, just like you have to do every time you get in the airplane. Then you can top off the fuel tanks, but you need to keep the aircraft in this position if you set it back down on its nose you'll drain some of that fuel out there is a provision in the manual here for ditching and water and the idea is to remain upright but with a retractable nose gear and fixed main gear your chances of remaining upright in one of these type of aircraft in a water ditching is very slim I was recently over the area of Half Moon Bay Airport in the Husky. This is just north of the airport in the Devil's Slide area, just giving you an idea of how rough that coastline is there at Northern California, very close to the Bay Area. And that water is cold. Half Moon Bay is located right down here off the nose of the Husky. Thank <laughs> you.
So engine trouble at night, shortly after takeoff, with a full load of passengers, no life jackets, and a ditching into the ocean, with fixed landing gear on the main gear, your chances of survival are very small. Thank you so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.